Welcome back everyone. So far, we've had a look at static site generation with and without having to fetch external data. We have our index page, which doesn't need any external data. And we also have a users page, which fetches a list of users from JSON placeholder API and renders it in the browser. Displaying a list of data is very common in web apps, and you now know how to pre-render such pages with get static props. Now what is also very common is the master detail UI pattern. It's also called the list detail pattern. In this pattern, you have a master page which displays a list of items and a details page which shows the relevant information of a selected item in the master page. For example, you can consider a blogging site. When a user lands on your home page, they are presented with a list of all your blog articles. When they click on one of the articles, they are navigated to a page where the actual article content is present. The scenario with Next.js routing is very simple to implement. We can add a slash blog route that renders a list of articles and we can add a slash blog slash blog ID which renders the individual article details. But staying in line with our topic of discussion, we want both these routes to be pre-rendered. We've already learned the benefits of pre-rendering pages so it is quite natural we want the feature in our blogging site as well. But we do have something different from what we have seen earlier, which is the dynamic ID parameter for each blog post. So let's now learn how to statically generate pages with dynamic parameters. Now for our external data, we are once again going to rely on JSON placeholder. If you scroll down to routes, the top two routes are exactly what we need for our example. We have a slash posts route, which returns an array of 100 posts. We also have slash posts slash post ID, which returns the data corresponding to one single post. We can use slash posts for the master page and slash posts slash post ID for the detail page. Now I understand it's not blog data, which was the case in our slide, but this serves the purpose. Now I'm going to break this video down into two parts. First part, we are going to implement the slash posts master page using get static props. This will also give you a chance to recollect how static generation works. For the second part, we will see how to implement the slash post ID detail route with the dynamic parameter. Let's begin with slash posts. Back in VS Code, in the pages folder, I'm going to create a new folder called posts. Within the folder, I'm going to create a new file called index.js. Within the file, I'm going to create our post list component. To implement this component though, we first need the post data. You could of course make use of the use effect hook to fetch the data, but that would not help pre-render a list of posts. What we need is the get static props function. So export async function get static props and within the function we make our API call. So const response is equal to await fetch and the API endpoint is slash posts. So copy the URL and paste it. Once we have the response, we convert it into JSON. Const data is equal to await response.json. From the function, we return an object which must contain a props key. So return an object 
which contains a props key. Now props also is an object and we return data. So posts, data. But data contains 100 posts. So let's keep it to a minimum and return the first three posts. So data dot slice and give us the first three posts. Now that we have the data, let's destructure it from the post list component props. For the JSX itself, let's render the post ID and the post title. So return, I'm going to add a heading, list of posts, and then we're going to map over the posts array. So posts.map, and for each post, we're going to return a div tag where the key is going to be post.id and h2 tag to render post.id followed by post.title. I'm also going to add a horizontal rule. ID and title, by the way, are properties on each post sent from the API. If we now go back to our application and navigate to slash posts, we do see an error. And that is because we haven't exported our post list component. So export default post list. If we now head back to the browser, we should see the three posts being displayed. If we view the page source, the three posts are present. So we have successfully pre-rendered the post list page. Next, let's take a look at pre-rendering the post ID page. In the pages folder, within the posts folder, I'm going to create a new file. The file name is within square brackets, postid.js. We need a dynamic route and this post ID is going to be our parameter. Within the file, let's define a post component. So function post and export default post. To implement this component though, we first need the post data corresponding to the post ID. And I've just realized our file extension is not added properly. So post ID dot JS. All right, now to implement this component, like I mentioned before, we first need the post data corresponding to the post ID. Again here, use effect, once again, is not what we want. We want to pre-render this post ID detail page for which the answer is our friend get static props. So export async function get static props and within the function we make our API call. So const response is equal to await fetch and the API endpoint this time is slash posts slash one. Of course here, one is the post ID, which needs to be extracted from the URL. Now the question is, how do we get hold of this route parameter within getStaticProps? Well, as it turns out, getStaticProps receives an argument. The convention is to call it context, but you can call it anything you want to. This context parameter is an object which contains a key called params. Let's destructure it. So const params from context. The params object will contain the post ID route parameter. So in our API endpoint, we can now use string interpolation and add the post ID at the end. So back ticks for string interpolation and instead of one dollar curly braces and on the params object, we have the post ID. Once we have the response, we convert it into JSON. So const data is equal to await 
response.json. From the function, we return an object which must contain a props key. And props is an object, and we return the individual post data. Now that we have the data, let's destructure it from the post component props. And in the JSX, let's render the post ID, title, and body. So return fragment h2 tag post.id followed by post.title and we also render post.body. So our detailed page is now ready. For the final step, let's add links to navigate to this page all the way from the home page. So in index.js within the pages folder within home component link href is equal to slash posts, anchor tag, and the text is posts. Next, in index.js, within the posts folder, that is post list component, import the link component at the top, and then wrap the h2 element with the link component. So link href is going to be equal to, within curly braces, back text, posts slash dollar curly braces post dot id and when we have a child that is not an anchor tag we need to set pass href and that should be it let's save all the files and test this out in the browser on the home page we have the link to navigate to the post list page here we can see the three posts on click of each post, we will be navigated to the individual post component. However, you can see that we now have an error. We did successfully navigate to slash posts followed by post ID, but the page does not render and instead throws an error. Get static paths is required for dynamic static site generated pages and is missing for slash posts slash post ID. Now what is this get static paths? What role does it play? And how do we fix this error? Let's take a look at all of that in the next video.